is CBS News Miami. Good afternoon and thank you for joining us. I'm Naja Sherman and welcome to CBS News Miami's 4 p.m. Quick Cast. Let's take a look at today's top stories. Off the top, we are following a developing story from West Miami Dade. Chopper 4 over the area of Chrome Avenue and Southwest 192nd Street. Police were on the scene of an armed robbery. It happened at what appears to be a shopping center. No word on what was taken or if anyone was hurt. CBS News Miami Steve Majuri is on the scene. His full report is coming up tonight at 5. An all out search right now for an escaped prisoner from the Chrome Detention Center. CBS News Miami's Peter Dench is in West Miami Dade with an update. There has been a massive search here for one detainee from the Chrome Detention Center. We are on Southwest 8th Street, just east of Chrome Avenue, and we have some new video to show you. Let's take a look. This is a mobile command center where those involved in the search are gathering. A spokesman for ICE, Immigration and Customs Enforcement, says they are leading this search, and they are being assisted by other agencies, including Miami-Dade Police and the Florida Highway Patrol. Let's go to a second piece of video. We are looking at an amphibious truck that can go through swampy areas here and in the Everglades. ICE says a detainee escaped at 632 last night from the Chrome Detention Center. And now let's take a look at a second piece of video. We are seeing a Miami-Dade police helicopter searching from the air. Nearby Pine Glades Academy is on lockdown at Southwest 8th Street and 152nd Avenue. ICE says there's no information to release right now about the detainee and how he escaped. In Southwest Miami-Dade, Peter Dench, CBS News, Miami. Peter will have the latest update on this story tonight at 5. Always alerting, always tracking. This is Next Weather. And taking a live look outside, it is hot, but the silver lining, the storms brought down the temperature. Let's get right to next weather. Meteorologist Cindy Pressler tracking what's ahead. So the storms did their job today, at least temporarily. Yes, we still have some showers and storms, but the atmosphere has been worked over places that did have rain earlier today. So now we just have a few of the stronger storms across southern Miami-Dade. So just some light showers here, uh, just to the west here, out in the Everglades. We're just talking about the Everglades. So we have a lot of rain, light rain falling on, along I-75 Everglades glades all to the west of 27 and also some light showers into Broward County but the strongest storms at this point not severe at this point though uh, to the south southern Miami Dade and there is some lightning there too so it's all following these outflow boundaries from the storms we had earlier and get this a double a double water spout was just to the northeast of Palm Beach this afternoon. Beautiful uh, to see something like that and no damage, but it was a double water spout and almost a third one started to form as well. So we had really good conditions for that. Picked up some pretty good rain, one, two, even three or three and a half inches according to our radar estimates here. So yes, indeed, the flooding issue is still there. That's going to continue as we head into the weekend because we have a juicy air mass stuck to the south of this uh, boundary here that's sitting over now northern Florida kind of bounces back and forth, but there's a lot of moisture available. All you need is for the sea breeze to come in and collide with the Gulf sea breeze, and that's what's been happening today. But we've got a little tropical wave that's going to be entering the picture this weekend. Now, this is not expected to develop into anything. However, it is going to bring deep tropical moisture. But the question is, where is that rain going to develop? We've got that easterly flow that should push our storms over the t into the interior and then the west side of the state. So look Look for that. Those rain chances will be a little bit on the higher side coming up Saturday and Sunday and then dropping next week. So certainly that's going to be good to dry out just a little bit. We'll time out the showers and storms for tonight into tomorrow. Friday morning, you might find a couple of showers along the coastal areas. That's just because of this east southeasterly flow again. A lot of showers and storms again by the afternoon. So that's very typical of this time of the year. And then again on Saturday, there comes that wave that'll bring in at least the moisture. So we're going to be seeing quite a bit of that over the weekend. But as far as how much could see as much as two, three, even four inches of rain, but really favoring the west side. So here's your forecast. Temperatures will stay in the 90s, of course, very humid as well. Best rain chances coming in on Saturday and Sunday. Let's hope it's not a total washout. Now at four, a man arrested for a disturbing case of animal cruelty is out of jail after posting bond. Rachel Gonzalez ran from our cameras after getting out of jail. Please say he's the man seen on viral video 
brutally kicking a dog. The shocking incident happened more than a week ago. Gonzalez was working as a pet groomer. He told detectives the dog was being aggressive and that it bit him on his finger. Gonzalez also said he's been having personal problems. He is fired and charged with animal cruelty. Voters decide now to campaign 2024 and the race to the White House. The Democratic National Convention wraps up tonight with the main event. Vice President Kamala Harris accepting her party's presidential nomination. Last night it was her running mate's time to shine. Minnesota Governor Tim Walz leaned on his background as a one-time football coach, telling the crowd they have the right team to win in November. Vice President Kamala Harris is set to make history tonight when she accepts the Democratic Party's nomination for president. CBS News Miami Skyler Henry reports from the DNC. The Democratic National Convention has been building all week to tonight when Vice President Kamala Harris takes the stage to accept her party's nomination for president. She's going to talk about her positive vision for the future of America, an America where the middle class won't just get by, but will get ahead. Her campaign says Harris will focus on three objectives, sharing her story and her record, contrasting her agenda with former President Donald Trump's and rooting her vision in a sense of patriotism. She's brought hope back like Obama had. Delegate Cynthia Freibarger of California tells us she's excited to hear from the nominee. I like what she stands for, especially for women, women's rights. Other delegates are eager for Harris to address key election issues, including immigration and border security. What are you going to be listening for and looking for in terms of her remarks? Um, you know, in El Paso, we're on the border. I think uh, making sure that uh, we manage the border in a correct uh, fashion, the bad rap and the bad reputation that we've been given by Republicans in our own state and nationally, uh, the, you know, the, the, the rhetoric that there's chaos, there's an invasion. Uh, we need to counteract all of that. Also slated to speak tonight, Arizona Senator Mark Kelly, who'd been on the VP shortlist, and his wife, former Congresswoman and gun control advocate Gabby Giffords, as well as former Republican Congressman turned Trump critic Adam Kinzinger. Convention organizers say tonight's theme is for our future. Skyler Henry, CBS News, Chicago. You can watch the coverage of the Democratic National Convention starting at 9 right here on CBS Miami. Then stick around for the late news. Former President Donald Trump and Ohio Senator J.D. Vance are focusing on immigration on the campaign trail today. Trump will visit the border in Arizona while Vance hosts an event in Georgia. At a rally in North Carolina yesterday, the former president used the occasion to talk about the Obamas. He was taking shots at your president. And so was Michelle. You know, they always say, sir, please stick to policy. Don't get personal. And yet they're getting personal all night long, these people. Do I still have to stick to policy? And another possible campaign development. Sources tell CBS News that Robert F. Kennedy Jr. is considering ending his campaign for president. They say he is moving closer to endorsing Trump. When we come back, how the shutdown of two major Canadian freight railroads may impact us right here in the United States. Welcome back to CBS News Miami's 4 p.m. Quaycast. Now to the Israel-Hamas war. Mediators are set to meet once again in Egypt. They're trying to hammer out a ceasefire and hostage proposal. President Biden spoke with Israel's Prime Minister on Wednesday. CBS News Miami's Jared Hill explains what happened. In Gaza City, people running for cover as the Israeli military struck a school and nearby home Wednesday, killing at least three people. At least 15 others injured, according to Gaza's Civil Emergency Service. Further south near Khan Yunus, more than 100,000 people once again being pushed out. People are afraid they're being displaced for the second, third, fourth, up to 10 times, uh, looking for somewhere safe. There's no way safe in Gaza. Wednesday, the White House says President Biden and Vice President Harris spoke to Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu about the urgency of bringing the ceasefire and hostage deal to a close. But hope appears to be dwindling. 
Key mediator Egypt says Hamas is wary of whether Israel will actually remove its troops from Gaza after the first phase of the proposal goes into effect, requiring Hamas to release the most vulnerable civilian hostages. At the Democratic National Convention, the parents of one of those hostages, 23-year-old Hirsch Goldberg Poland, pled for an end to the war. Needing our only son and all of the cherished hostages home is not a political issue. Outside, hundreds of pro-Palestinian protesters marched with a message for Democrats. Tell the DNC, not in our name, not with our tax dollars, not with U.S.-made weapons. Hoping to use their political muscle to bring about peace. Jared Hill, CBS News. Workers in Canada at two freight networks have come to a full stop today. Industry experts say the labor dispute will damage business across the U.S. Experts estimate the rail stoppage could cause billions of dollars worth of economic damage. Canada and the U.S. are tightly integrated, particularly in the auto industry. And in energy, a lot of the United States runs on Canadian oil, uh, tar sands, other things. And a lot of what we consider American cars are actually assembled in Canada. And a one week one would be over a billion dollars in terms of U.S. costs. Canada sends about 78 percent of all of its exports to the U.S. Here's a look at what is coming up all new on CBS News Miami at 5. A South Florida woman turning her pain into purpose. How she is helping others going through grief with a simple download. And that's your CBS News Miami Quick Cast. I'm Naja Sherman. Stay tuned for more news right here on CBS News Miami. And have a great day.